Welcome to Specific Love. Today I'm going to show you how I built this awesome doghouse for our outside pit. Come here, boy. Yeah. We currently keep one of our dogs outside as an alarm and a deterrent for any unusual activity. And for him, we have a kennel constructed under our back deck. But on some rainy days, there can be a flow of water in this area, causing his bedding to become wet for days. So to solve this problem, I decided to build a large raised doghouse to help keep him dry and warm in the winter. I first started this project by taking apart an old wooden crate that I had received during Christmas. The crate contained many 1x6 pieces of lumber that will work great for this project. So I took several pieces of lumber to my table saw and ripped them down to 2.5 inches. This will allow me to construct the legs and frame into a lightweight but sturdy structure. Once I had all the necessary pieces of wood, I trimmed them down to length on the miter saw. Now for each leg, I will be using two pieces of wood in an L shape for strength. But to obtain the angle of the roof, I had to trim the tops of all the legs with a 10 degree angle. Four of these pieces needed a standard angle cut, and four of them needed a beveled cut. Fortunately, this was easily completed with a miter saw. I then matched up all of the legs, making sure the appropriate angles at the tops were in alignment with each other. I then glued and screwed all of them in place. Now when designing this doghouse, I wanted the base to be about two inches off the ground, which would allow for any flowing water to pass under or around, but not find its way inside. So I used a speed square to line up the base and clamped it in place. This allowed me to drill holes from the outside and secure each of the pieces with screws. Now for the top of the frame, each of the pieces needed to be cut with an angle. For the front and back supports, I had to rip them down on the table saw at a 10 degree angle. For the back legs, the top support had to be angled inward, but on the front legs, the angle had to be facing outward. I then screwed them to the top of each leg, making sure everything lined up. At this point, I had to move all of the pieces to the floor for more room. I then attached the two remaining base frame supports to each side, and this structure started to finally look like a doghouse. I next measured out the appropriate distance for three more floor joists to help support the plywood I plan on using for the floor. This also gave a lot more strength to the total structure. Moving to the top of the frame, I had to add two more joining supports which also had to have a 10 degree cut on each side for the appropriate pitch of the roof. I also added a secondary piece which will help box off the outside frame of the house and will provide a small lip for the inner walls to lean against. Have you ever been in the middle of the build only to realize, oh no, am I going to be able to get this out my door? And the answer would be, no. <laughs> I made this thing too wide and I can't get it out of any of my doors. So I'm going to have to find some strategic way to unbolt a couple things, unscrew them and, well, Hope for the best to get it out. Now I'm sorry if the lighting is not the best out here, but unfortunately, well as you saw, I can't finish this in my shop, so I'm gonna build it out here actually in the dog's kennel, and hopefully he won't shoot it before I get done with it. I then added an outside frame to the front, back, and sides of the doghouse, which should help align the floor and walls in place when installing them. It will also make the outside appearance of the doghouse much nicer. Now for the floor of the doghouse, I'm gonna use this old piece of uh, about half inch plywood. I, I don't remember what it was painted for, but the good thing about having a coat of paint on here, it will help any kind of water residue from the dog's feet, and that'll help protect the plywood underneath. So I'm gonna trim this down, and I'm gonna put it inside. So I clamp the guy board in place, and use a circular saw to quickly cut off the excess wood on two sides. I then took the floor out to the frame, and laid it in place. 
I quickly climbed on top and it supported 170 pounds with ease, so I was confident it could support anything my dog could throw at it. But to keep it from moving around and possibly coming loose in the future, I added just a few screws for support. And it was now time to see what the dog would think. Come on, come check it out. Come on, come on. Yeah, yeah, what is it? It is, huh? What is it? Get that frog in my face. Come on, I already got it dirty. Look at that, you already get it dirty. Come on. Yeah, yeah, look at there. Can you sit? Can you sit? Can you sit? Like it, sit, sit. Good boy. Yeah. Think he likes it. It was now time to add the outside frame pieces to the front and back, which meant I had to again take it to the table saw for some angled cuts. I then clamped them and screwed them securely in place. Now to build the walls, I used some thin cheap plywood that I purchased in 4x8 sheets. I first started with the rear wall because it was a simple rectangle and would let me see how square the total structure was built. I then laid it in place with a small shim underneath to lift it off the floor in case any water or residue existed in the future. Everything lined up well and it screwed securely in place. I next started cutting out the front wall which needed to have a large archway for the dog to pass through easily. I used a carpenter square, a bucket lid, and my jigsaw to help cut out the structure. I then secured it in place in the front of the house. Now the side walls had to have an angle cut on the top to fit, and this was easily done by measuring out each corner and clamping a guide board in place to use a circular saw. I then clamped and screwed each of them in place. Now for the roof of the doghouse, I trimmed out another piece of plywood that was the same width but a little longer on the front and back. And since the plywood was thin, I needed a little internal support for strength. So I added four pieces of wood to the underside, which made it much more rigid. I then positioned a the roof in place and added a couple of hinges on the back side to allow for it to be lifted with ease in case of cleaning. Now that I have the hinges in place, I can easily see that you can get in and out of the doghouse real easily if you need to get inside, maybe to change the comforter out or whatever you're gonna put in there for your dog. To hold this up, you just need something solid. Right here, I just happen to have a piece of PVC that I have some grooves cut in the top and the bottom. You just make sure it hooks on the wood here and the wood there, and it's relatively secure, kind of like a, uh, I don't know, a hood to a car. But otherwise, you can get in, get out, and it's a great way to make a simple dog house. Check it out. Yeah. How do you like it? Yeah. How do you like it? You like your house? Get him, Lincoln. Get him. Get him. He just licked my forehead. <laughs> Now I plan on using this doghouse under our back porch, so I'm not too concerned about it getting wet. But if you plan on using this outside, possibly in the rain, then I'd suggest uh, not leaving just this bare wood. Maybe put some shingles on it or some kind of tar paper to protect it so that it can withstand some of the weather. Now our dog, of course, seems to like this. Let me see you get that. In here. He seems to love going in and out real easily. It's the perfect height for him. And so overall, we're very pleased with this doghouse, and I hope it'll last a very long time. Now, if you like this video, make sure you click the like button. Tell us what you think about it in the comments. I also have some other great videos right over here, so make sure you check those out. Otherwise, have fun building.